previously on The Witnesses. In fulfillment of Christ's last promise to his apostles, the Holy Spirit descends upon his followers, empowering them with great boldness and miraculous gifts. My legs! I can feel my legs! I can walk! Look! As a result, the number of believers increases, as does the jealousy of the Pharisees. It's time we bring a stop to this mess, one way or the other. In the midst of great opposition and persecution, the church is scattered into surrounding regions where they continue to share the gospel, even with non-Jews. Do you believe with all your heart. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Eager to stamp out the growth of the Christians, the Pharisees rally around one of their own, Saul of Tarsus. Take them to the prison, all of them. Who zealously vows to imprison every believer until an unexpected encounter leaves him a changed man. What is this? are true. Read it for yourself. But how? To our cause. So passionate. Exactly. Saul is passionate. And he is driven. And that is precisely why we must stop him before he has a chance to cause any trouble. We must find Saul. And we must do so quickly. to be found. These houses, search them right away. That should do it. All right, we're ready. Governor's orders. This man must be dangerous. Soldiers! Please. Be very careful. Don't worry, God is with us. We'll be fine. By order of the governor, open the door. Now, search every room. Yes, sir. Up here. What are you uh, out of my way? He will not get past this gate. Not on my watch. this door. Yes, yes, coming. Stall. But I... Open now. Stall. I... I... Uh... Hurry, hurry, hurry. I said open. I'm, I'm sorry. I was... Oh. Out of the way. Search there. Please, what do you want? this what do you want step aside if you'd only tell us what you need then i can Quiet. help you away from the window 
If you tell me what you want, perhaps I can help you. I said quiet. Well? Nothing. No one else is in the house. Let's go. Wasted no time sharing his story publicly. How he was stopped dead in his tracks by the resurrected Jesus himself as he was on his way to persecute our people. How he realized that Jesus was indeed the Messiah, the Son of God. So his peers, the Pharisees, they wanted to catch him. Catch him? Catch him? He was a danger to their cause. They wanted him silenced, out of the way, killed. I tell you, Saul's life had changed in more ways than one. He had become a hunted fugitive. Unable to return to his house, he sought refuge with his fellow believers in Jerusalem, hoping for a warm reception. Jesus Christ prepared us when he said, if they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. And we know this is so, because after his death on the cross, true to his word, the Lord rose from the grave. Ah! What is what Jesus is it? Christ? Solo, don't be alarmed. Please. He raided our houses, hauled our brothers to prison. I'm not the same man. He is. I was there. I... But wait, look. There are no soldiers. He seems to be by himself. I am here alone. But you will not remain that way. Come with me. You brought him here? He's in the next room. In the next? Barnabas, what were you thinking? Do, do you realize who this man is? I heard him speak in Damascus about Christ. I know who he was. I know who he was before he met the Lord. Met the... Yes, the Lord, the Lord, on his way to Damascus. Where he had gone to persecute our brothers. Peter, that man has the blood of our brothers on his hands. He is guilty. And yet forgiven. Is it that hard for you to believe that God could forgive as guilty a man as I am? I have blood on my hands. But Jesus appeared to me, to me. He spoke to me, changed me. And now I will do whatever it takes to tell others about him, anything at all. 
There he stood, a changed man, if ever we saw one. And how could Peter deny him trust? After all, hadn't the Lord himself forgiven him for his betrayal? Saul was nearly unstoppable. And I saw him, Jesus himself, a man I know was crucified, a man whose very name I spit upon, a man I now know to be the very Son of God. And I am prepared to suffer anything for his sake. It must be true. It has to be. And why do you say that? Because this is Saul. We have known of his zeal to stamp out these Jesus followers. And yet, here he stands, turning his back on all he has worked for all his life. It has to be true. Tell us more, Saul, please. I am glad you were so willing to suffer for this Jesus. I guarantee you, you will. So, we just walk away and do nothing, huh? No. We walk away and let others handle our business. until he's alone. They're going to get Paul. I must tell Peter. Tarsus? It's for your own safety, and I'm not concerned about my safety. But we are. You don't understand. I... There are people in prison, people dead because of my actions. Which is why we must be careful. People know who you are. Once they hear your story, it will speak to the heart of many others, perhaps even others like you. The Pharisees know that, and they will want you stopped. Saul, you are a threat to them. Going to Tarsus is for your safety. But I want as well as that of the other believers, at least for now. We must fight his battles, his way, not our own. God be with you, Saul. conversion, the believers had a time of peace. And with that peace, our numbers grew. But not just among the Jews. To our great joy, the message of Jesus was embraced by Jew and non-Jew alike, regardless of their background, their religion, or their race. Christ was for all, and all were welcomed by him. But God raised from the dead. After Jesus was baptized, John said that he saw the Spirit. You see, God did not send his Son into the world to condemn it. And then Jesus said, the time is coming when the true worshipers will worship. Jesus said, go and your son will live. And while that man was on his way, Jesus told the man to get up and walk. And just as Jesus said that, the man got up. Astounding. You're, you're overflowing. And more people come every day, Barnabas. It's just as the Lord said, the harvest is plentiful. And so it is. But the laborers, we need help, Barnabas. Someone who can teach them. Actually, someone who could teach us. I see what you mean. If only we had more help. If only someone... Barnabas? 
Barnabas, where, where are you going? Me? I'm going away. But you just got here. You came to bring help. And that's precisely what I'm going to bring, my dear brother. I'm going to bring the help you need. As I wait for God's direction, and it has come. Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. It's time for a good catch, brother. Let's go. But uh, I cannot return to Jerusalem. You're not. We go on to Antioch, to the Gentiles. The Gentiles? Yes, yes. You will be amazed, my brother. God has spread his nets, and the catch is very great indeed. For a year, Saul and Barnabas remained in Antioch, teaching the growing number of believers. I want to finish the course before me. Soon there were so many that the local people gave us a name. Oh. I've heard plenty of names used for you. <laughs> like... <clears throat> I think he meant a real name, not the insults. Here, help out. Uh, right. Christians. That's what they called us. You know, Christ followers. So, they accepted you. Well, the people did. But not the authorities. No, persecution was never far away. It was about this time that Herod acted against us once again, goaded by our old enemies. People are being arrested all over the city. I'm telling you, it's only a matter of time before the authorities show up here. I told you, you just can't barge in here. Peter! Peter! I tried to stop him. What is it? What's wrong? It's James. James? What about him? He's been arrested. Arrested? Arrested? James? What? What did I tell you? What did I tell you? Herod Agrippa will stop at nothing. Nothing at all. You know what to do. You cannot stop us. You cannot stop what God is doing. You might as well try and stop the rain! Lord, I come to you. What do you want? James. You were here. He's dead. But not his religion. We have word that their seditious lies are spreading beyond our Jewish brothers. What do you mean? This religion, Herod, is being taught everywhere to everybody. Samaria, Joppa, Antioch. They are even teaching Greeks. And if you think these Christians are a thorn in your side now, how much more as their numbers increase by way of these Gentile dogs? I'm listening. James was not their only leader. There is yet another. 
the fishermen, the one they call... Peter! Now they have arrested Peter! What? How? Where? We need to let the others know. Tell them to gather here. I'll get the word out. Andrew, let's go. Oh, John, Peter. Herod may have put him in bonds, but chains and locks will not bind the power of God. We will pray and trust God for a miracle. you have delivered before. We pray for Peter, who at this very hour remains prisoner in Herod's jail. Protect him. Keep him. Somehow liberate him. We look to you, O oh God, for deliverance. Who is it? It's me. Peter, open the door. Who did you say you are? Peter. It's Peter. Open the... <gasps> At the... What are you saying? Peter's in prison. That's why we're praying for him to... But he's just outside. Now stop. Get a hold of yourself. That's impossible. I'm telling you, he's at the door. He's... John, be careful. Peter! Shut the door. How did you get out? What, what, what happened? Sheeta, but how? By the hand of God. An angel of the Lord brought me out of the prison. It was a miracle. Not even the guards realized what happened. But, but... There's no time for explanations now. I must get out of the city. There'll be problems. I'm sure once they realize I'm... Gone? Gone? We searched the premises. The gate is locked. He could not have gotten out. And yet... Yet? Uh, I'm sorry, but he's gone. Vanished. He just... Execute them. Now! What? No! No! no. Please. We no. didn't do anything Please. wrong! Please. Please! I'll stamp out these troublemakers if it's the end of me. Please! 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 And that's precisely what happened. What do you mean? He didn't stamp you out? No, he didn't. He died instead. Some say it was worms. I say it was an act of God. So he was out of the way. No. But James was killed. Peter was gone. The rest of you had to scatter, to flee. Maybe you weren't stamped out, but you were dispersed. Surely it was a dark time for you. Mm, true. But just as surely, in the greatest darkness, a tiny light can be seen for miles. Jesus had told us 
I have set you to be the light of the world so that you may bring salvation to every part of the earth. Though it always came with a price. We found him. Saul? Paul. That's what he goes by now. A Roman name. So, he sheds his Jewish name. In order to, as he has been heard to say, become all things to all men, that I may win as many as possible to a uh, Jesus the Messiah. Fool as many as possible is more like it. So, where is the traitor? Lystra. But with Herod gone, we have few allies. With the authorities, few, yes. But there are other means at our disposal. Send a message to our Pharisee brothers in Lystra. Tell them to be on the lookout for any gatherings, any commotion. Wherever there is one, Saul is sure to be in the middle. Paul! As I told you, he goes by the name of Paul. I heard you the first time. I don't care what he calls himself. I don't care if he calls himself Saul, Paul, or Caesar. Just get a message to Lystra. Any disturbance by Paul in that city may work to our advantage. Heal! Look! Look! I, I can walk! I can walk! It can't be! But look! Look at him! Look! How? How did it happen? He... These men! I saw them! They healed this man! This man stands before you healed. Healed by the name of Mercury. Mercury? What? He's right. It's Mercury. Mercury and They're Jupiter. Gods. The gods of the Jupiter? Mercury. No, please. Men of the gods have come down to us. The gods. you are doing stop stop let them speak i say let them speak what are you doing you're calling us gods us as if we had anything to do with this poor man's healing you are too humble too humble oh mercury let us offer you a sacrifice it was not by our doing that this man stands whole, nor by the power of Mercury or Jupiter. Oh, what happened? What is he doing? Why did you? This man was healed by the power of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. The Son of God. No! No! Sacrilege! Stone them! Get rid of them! Sacrilege! Stone them! Get rid of them! Sacrilege! Stone them! Stone them! Get rid of them! Oh, Barnabas! I've got to get help! Let's go. I want to see. I want to make sure they're dead. We need to go. Now. Let's let Jerusalem know Paul is dead right away. Are they dead? 
We're fine. Uh, speak for yourself. Uh, my head. Uh, help me up. Here, let me help. I'll carry you. I'm, I'm fine. Easy. Where are you going? Where is he going? Where I was sent. Take care of him. Went back into the city, Paul could be a little hard-headed. In more ways than one, sounds like. Wasn't he hurt? Of course, he practically limped there. But can you imagine the impression it made on the people? He went right back to telling them about Jesus, and they listened. They listened because he bled while he spoke with them. Paul just wouldn't give up. And he did his best to encourage other believers by his example. Be strong. Stand firm in your faith, confident that Jesus himself stands with us. Think of the love that drove him to the cross to die for you. Think of that and pray for the same strength as hardships come your way. I tell you that every insult, every stone, every difficulty cannot compare with the glory that God has in store for each of us in heaven. And we strive with everything within us to share that eternal home with as many as possible. For years, Paul and his companions traveled from city to city teaching the growing number of believers, establishing leaders, and always, always telling more people about the message of Jesus. In the meanwhile, as the number of disciples grew, so did the need for oversight and organization. They were exciting days, challenging days. Peter had returned to Jerusalem and there were many times that we all gathered to exchange stories, to pray, and to do our best to establish our growing movement, which, as I said before, was not always met with enthusiasm. Ah! Ah! We have done nothing wrong! Ah! We will be the judges of that. Stupid men disrupting the peace. As if we didn't have anything better to do than deal with religious lunatics. Lock them up for the night. Right away. See if your silly god can get you out of this one. He's done it before. That should keep him quiet for a while. At midnight I will rise to give you thanks. Will he not shut up? You are my strong defense. You guide my ways. You guide my ways. Silas? I'm still here. <laughs> I thought my singing might have scared you off. No, no. I'm riveted. You've got a captive audience. <laughs> I'm bound to listen to you. <laughs> ah, Barnabas warned me. Oh? Never a dull moment, he said. <laughs> but truly, what a couple of months we've had. The Lord has been good. We have much to be thankful for. We do. I will give thanks unto you, O Lord and sing praises unto your name. We lift our voice in song. Not again! Rejoice in you. I'm going to... You kill me! 
The magistrate will have my head. What happened? The prisoners. They've escaped. I'm a dead man. Stop. Don't do that. We're here. Do not harm yourself. G God? Did God do this? That night, the keeper of the prison and his entire family came to faith in Jesus. And the next day, I, I, I have good news for you. Uh, the magistrate, he's decided to free you. He has decided to free us? The magistrate? Yes, and he wants you to take advantage of the opportunity and leave the city. He arrested us, Roman citizens. Condemned us, beat us, imprisoned us, all publicly. And now he wants us to leave, secretly? the men he had flogged? I... I... had no idea you were Roman citizens. I, uh... Please. Go in peace. possessed of evil spirits and if you can imagine it even more astonishing things and so I've learned to be content in whatever state I find myself I've learned to have and I've also learned to do without in every state the Lord is Please. talking to be content Paul. And I would hope that you can do the same, for this is the testimony to those that do not believe. I tell you, I never doubted I was to serve God. But never, never, never. Ah! What happened? Eurychus, he's fallen. What? My son. He fell through the window. My son. My son. Is he dead? My son. My son. He, he's, he's. Eurychus. Don't weep. Nothing is impossible with God. wonderful things you say happened. So why then? Why the persecution? The floggings? Why are you here? A 90 year old man in chains. Because of the danger. Danger? What danger? Look at him. 
and look at us. Tell me, Pulo, are you not being changed by listening even to this 90-year-old unarmed man? Seems to me you change a man from the inside and everything changes. That's been the threat. The impossibility of the miracles, the breaking down of barriers between people, the idea of loving enemies. All of this changes everything. Right. And the miracles were not just the healing of people and the raising of the dead. The miracles were also God granting the desire and grace to love others, our enemies, as you say, giving hope to the hopeless. It was God at work in our lives. It was God's way of letting us know he was there. Everything was new with you Christians. Everything as it should be. You don't get it? It wasn't just a new religion, a new set of rules or beliefs. It's never been about that. It's been about Jesus, alive, living in the hearts of each believer, everyone that would come to him. It broke down barriers, rich, poor, masters, slaves. People began to look out for each other to care for each other. A revolution, well, of sorts, I mean, but not a violent one. One more powerful than that, right? They have turned the whole world upside down. That's what they said about us. And they were right. It was unstoppable. Paul kept on moving, establishing the believers everywhere he went. He didn't stop. It was as if he knew something was going to happen. There is nothing I have kept from you. I have done my best to teach in public and in your homes. I have testified about Jesus to everyone. And now I go to Jerusalem, not knowing what may happen to me there. All I know is that God promises there will be great hardships, difficulties, but I want you to know one thing, that the difficulties, the loneliness, being persecuted, none of that means anything to me. With everything within me, I want nothing more but to finish the course before me. Not with complaints or tears, but with joy as I keep Jesus forefront in my heart. After this night, you will not see me again. What? But why? Because he will become a prisoner. Agabus, what are you talking about? God has spoken to me, Paul. Listen to what the Holy Spirit says to you. In the same way, will the Jews in Jerusalem bind the man that owns this and deliver him unto the authorities? Paul, you must not go! You can't! Well? Well, what? Do you want to hear the report or not? I don't. I already know what it says. It just arrived. I already know what it says. I can imagine what it says. More Christian converts, more cities, more countries, more blah, blah. I've heard it. I know it. It's been 25 years. 25? Since the death of that Jesus of Nazareth. And? It's been 25 years of frustration. I want it to end. I want it to stop. I want... Paul. Don't mention that name. Just... He's coming. 
Here? Reports say he is making his way to Jerusalem for one of their Christian holy days. The city will be teeming with people. He causes a ruckus, as he usually does. And... The new governor would never stand for it. Precisely. Which means... Which means... He could then be arrested. For disturbing the peace. What are we waiting for? Our old friend is coming for a visit. Let's give him just what he wants. A reception he will never forget. Now's time. Now! This is the man. The one you have heard about. Saul of Tarsus, the blasphemer, who teaches people everywhere to go against our religion. I do nothing of the sort. Blasphemer! I do nothing of the sort. I only speak of what God has shown me. Let me speak further. Let me speak. He has brought his companions. Foreigners who are not permitted in our temple. He has brought them in to defile this holy place. Stone them! Stone them! This man has disrupted the peaceful worship. I am judged without being heard. The peaceful worship in our temple. He's a troublemaker. I have done nothing to... And blasphemer. Get him out. Take him out of here. Step aside. Move back. Move back, I say. Have him blocked. What? Get back here. You cannot... <laughs> Why? Because you're such a modern Jewish citizen? No, because I am a Roman one, a citizen of Rome. Roman? Freeborn. Paul had indeed been born a Roman citizen, and as such... The chief captain himself would be breaking the law if Paul was not given a fair trial. So, why didn't he bring that up before? Why at that time? Jesus had appeared to him again. The Lord assured him that as he had witnessed to the gospel in all the other places, that he would do the same at the highest seat of power. Rome. Rome. But Roman law was not about to stop Paul's enemies. A vow. Forty of us. We will not eat or drink until... until we have gotten rid of Paul. Rid of? Killed him. Tell the chief captain to bring him down to you tomorrow, and that, tell him that you wish to talk with him, and then, when he is on his way, this is what we'll do. see the captain. Someone is planning to kill the prisoner. Paul, go inside. Here they come. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
well? You might as well have something to eat. What? He's gone. Gone? Paul? Where to? We'll catch up with him. You'd be outnumbered. Outnumbered? I told you, there are 40 of us. There are 40 of us that have bowed. Did you hear me? 40! Chief Captain Lysias, under the most excellent governor Felix, I send you a man most hated by his own peers. A man who they conspired to kill had I not taken the liberty to send him to you, both for his protection as a Roman citizen, as well as for a fair hearing. For two years, Paul was kept under guard, with the Pharisees relentlessly bringing accusations against him, until his case was brought before the new governor and the visiting King Agrippa. And from that moment, I continue to do all I can to tell others about the message of Jesus, that God sent his son to die for our sins, and that now, now he offers everyone, both Jew and non-Jew alike, forgiveness and the reward of a life in heaven to those that believe. And this is why I'm threatened with death, when in fact, I've said nothing but what Moses and our own prophets have spoken of before. You're quite the orator. You almost have me believing. Oh, and I wish you and all here could experience what I have experienced. Well, with the exception of these, of course. <laughs> I gathered that. What is this man doing here? And the chains, the death threats. I agree, he's a man with convictions. Certainly a sincere man, but certainly not worthy of death. He could have been freed had he not appealed to Rome. But he has appealed unto Caesar. And to Caesar he shall go. for every single person, including the prisoners. Very well. Ah! A viper! We 
What happened? He's been bitten by a viper. A viper! He'll be dead before you know it. I wonder what crime he committed to escape death at sea, only to die on shore. Let me look at your hand. I'm fine. No one can survive that venom. This is impossible. He, he should be dead. What are you doing? Everyone's cold. We need more wood for the bonfires. That Paul did not die from the serpent's bite caused some to consider him some sort of god. Paul, of course, took the opportunity to refute that. And instead, talk them about Jesus. When Paul prayed for the very sick father of the chief of the island, and he got healed, the news spread quickly. Soon, many diseased people were brought to him, and they too were miraculously healed. For three months, they remained on the island, Paul teaching, God moving among them mightily, and many lives were changed. When winter ended, they resumed their voyage. Finally arriving at their destination, Rome. The prisoners were then delivered to the captain of the guard, except for Paul. What happened to him? He was placed in a house with a guard. Sounds familiar. Chained to him. Chained? Oh, he was a dangerous man. At least you weren't chained. To us, I mean. No, you're right. I was banished to a desolate island. Dangerous man that I am. <coughs> For two years, Paul remained in Rome. For two years, he taught the many, many people that came to hear him and took advantage of the time he still had. Until... I gather you aren't here to change guards. that happened to me have turned out to the spreading of the gospel. Many brothers seeing my confidence, even in chains, are much more bold to speak without fear. And now, I trust that God will be glorified, whether through my life or by death. For to me, to live is Christ, and to die is gain.
it's over. He's dead. He can do no more damage. What is it? In Rome. What did he do all that time? What did he do with all that time? Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God. Who will separate us from the love of Christ, or tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or danger, or weapons? No, in all these things we are more than conquerors, through him who loved us. faithful testimony brought light to many people. He was faithful in life and faithful unto death. The others followed one by one. Andrew was crucified. Matthew was martyred in Ethiopia. Thomas in India. James, he was thrown down from the temple and stoned. Jude was put to death in Persia. And Peter, oh, Peter was also crucified upside down. Each one remained faithful, even in death, giving their life for others as our Lord did for us. Of the first 12, only I remain. To continue to witness to us. <laughs> yes, to you. Just going up there to pray. Don't worry, I won't escape. I guess the point is, is it worth it? You know, is it worth giving up everything like he has to follow Jesus Christ? I guess that's a decision every person has to make for himself. Titus, you convert to that old man's religion and you know what will happen to you. Is it really worth it? who had been killed 
because of their testimony. They asked, how long, O Lord, before you judge this world and avenge our blood? Each of them was given a white robe and told to wait a little longer before the full number of those, their brothers and sisters, would also be killed. And I saw seven angels with seven trumpets, and as the trumpet sounded, one third of the earth was burned up. One third of the water turned to blood. The sun and the moon were darkened, and this was only the beginning. A time of great tribulation will fall upon the earth, unlike it has ever seen. Then I saw a white horse, and he who rode it had eyes like blazing fire. He was dressed in a robe dipped in blood. Of heaven followed him. He is the King of kings and Lord of lords. Out of his mouth came a sharp sword to judge the nations and wage war. Finally, I saw a new heaven and a new earth. And all of those who believed and remained faithful until the end will reign with him forever and ever. He will be our God, and we shall be his people. Come, Lord Jesus.